He actually, on his phone call, he was brilliant, because he phoned up Sir John Guinness's office, who's the chairman of British Nuclear Fuel. And this woman said, oh, I'm, I'm afraid uh, he's in a meeting. Would you go and get him for me, please? <laughs> oh, well, I'll see if he'll come out for you. Hello? Mr. Guinness? Yes. Ah, uh, I'm most grateful that you came out of the meeting. Uh, I've still got the chief executive with me. This is wonderful. You can both hear it then. <laughs> well, let me just ask you this question, please. Because at a meeting you had with the residents, representatives of British Nuclear Fuel said that they had been in consultation with the local branches of Tesco's and Sainsbury's. Now, uh, I have, of course, done my best and checked it with Sainsbury's and Tesco's, and they entirely and wholly deny that any contact has taken place between themselves and DRS or BNFL. Now, I have uh, a great deal of respect for all these major companies, but somebody's lying. Uh, and I just wanted to find out, and it's a very general question, as to whether you feel in your heart of hearts that you lot are lying, or, or that it is the, the uh, Sainsbury and Tesco organizations. We'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> I've been able to see a copy of the letter you sent to Rudy Biz. Um, and there's one point on it I'd like to explore in some detail at the public meeting. Mr. Livingston, I think that calling out of the blue for mm. recording purposes um, is not fair uh, play. So if you... Well, excuse me, but excuse me, but talking about fair play, you're the organisation that circulated public information that I had been consulted when you hadn't consulted me at all. Um, so do, do not talk about fair play. You've actually behaved in a very underhand way all the way through this, and I assume that sort of lead comes from you as chairman personally. Mr. Livingston, uh, last time I met you, uh, you got a round of applause from people, including myself. Your previous remarks were totally inappropriate, and I'd be grateful if you write to me rather than insult me. I'm not insulting you. Oops. I wonder what he was at. We want it to be entirely fair to British Nuclear Fuels, so we, we've wa we walked along there the other day and put out a video box of truth outside their headquarters. We faxed them with a list of questions and we said, come down, we're going to leave the box out here for three hours. At any point, you can come and record your answers. That's it. Right, I think I'll go and give him a little knock. And just tell him it's here. From Strepsil. Do you want a cup of tea? Are you sure? Do you want coffee? This is uh, the British nuclear fuel yo-yo, which is actually a, a safer source of power. And this was, this was one that they were handing out at the Labour Party conference. Now, British nuclear fuel get paid money by the taxpayer, which they then use to lobby the Labour Party in order to get more money from the taxpayer or to individually benefit from a privatisation. So I think this is fairly out of order. And then we started looking at Sellafield. And we took some samples. So what we have here is the sample that comes from the, uh, from the side of the track, just by where the train stops outside the works. What we're seeing is cesium-137 mm -hmm. and is undoubtedly that but we've got a line just very close to it which is cesium-134 so we've got that pair which is as it were the fingerprint of Sellafield uh, the train track entering Sellafield yes is contaminated um, if you found a spectrum like this from the side of a track in London um, someone would have quite a lot of explaining to do the five man-made isotopes were found up. There was cesium-137-134, there was americium-241, ruthenium-106, and zirconium-95. Now, we've really got two questions to ask Sir John Guinness. And we do know you'll be watching, Sir John. Because <laughs> you phoned up Channel 4 to say, when's the programme coming on? <laughs> Here are my two questions to you, Sir John. You can write to me 
Faxus, or any of the people that tried to get through to you, John Pilger, Paul Foot, anyone. And these are the two questions. First of all, how much are you personally going to profit from the privatisation of British nuclear fuel? Is it a million, two million? Just drop us a line. We're always at the end of a phone. You can call. Second question we'd like to ask relates to the cesium, the americium, the ruthenium, and the zirconium. Simple question. If those isotopes were found at the side of the track in Sellafield, were they found because A, the train flasks were leaking, or B, the Sellafield area is contaminated? If you could just fax us, don't bother with the waffle, just have two boxes, A, trains, B, area shagged, C, both. <laughs> just fax us back, we await your call. Oh, oh, oh.